Oh hi! What up amigos? My name is Rory McClay. I realised there are a couple of kind of concepts or philosophies that had a pretty big impact on how I think about uh, kind of creativity and affected the way I write music, so I thought I'd share those with you. The first one was in a lesson in Music GCSE where our teacher told us about a composer who, I can't remember his name unfortunately, but this guy said that true expression is when you lock yourself away in a room for a week um, and then once the week is up you go to your instrument and play the first thing that comes to you. That's obviously a little bit extreme, I'm not really suggesting you lock yourself away for a week, but it kind of caught my attention because the guy was kind of looking for ways to push himself musically without spending time doing music and I thought that was kind of cool and it got me thinking well kind of what else could you do to kind of further your creativity without necessarily spending time practicing your instrument or you know things outside of music affecting your music and then um, there are no real particular examples I can give of that but there are things like I notice when I go away on holiday or if I take a break from playing music and focus on something else when I do get back to my instrument or get back into the kind of musical mindset I have a much kind of fresher approach and um, the thing I kind of took away from this is that I realised I was spending time writing music even if I was doing something that seemed completely irrelevant and um, things like taking a break while you're in the process of the creative process uh, is a vital part of it and that kind of has some value I think. In that same lesson we were taught about a composer called John Cage who wrote a piece of music called 4 minutes and 33 seconds and the kind of premise behind this music is that anything that happens within those 4 minutes and 33 seconds is the music. There were no notes written musically uh, John would just get up on stage, sit at a piano in front of a live audience, the piece would begin, and then anything that happened, whether someone coughed or sneezed or fell off their chair, that was considered part of the music. This, for me, I thought was kind of cool because it was the first piece of music, by, by definition, that wasn't played on an instrument. It wasn't notated and written, and... Uh, I just kind of like the concept of that and as I've said in other videos I later discovered people like Tom Waits who kind of not to quite that extreme but put that same sort of thing into practice where they're using random bits of trash cans or whatever to write their music with and it wasn't necessarily all coming from an instrument uh, so I thought that was kind of cool concept I kind of put upon myself is the idea of growing up with a guitar but having never had anyone show you how to use it or how to play it and uh, how you would approach using it to, to write music and this I've always thought is kind of cool because obviously certain techniques and certain tunings how to pick all of these things are important but if you balance that with a completely uh, kind of oblivious mindset and literally just pick it up to, to make music with it, look at it purely as a mechanical object, um, that can sometimes change your outlook on how to, how to use it musically. So you've got people like, uh, like Andy McKee who was playing drum parts, you know, tapping away drum parts on his guitar, there's countless other people, I don't need to list them, but that sort of approach where it's like, oh that's cool, you know, you could write acoustic music and just play acoustic guitar as traditionally known, but there's there's always more you can do with it. Another guy is, I think his name's Matthias Eklund, who He's got a band called Freak Kitchen and a solo project called Freak Guitar. I can't remember the name of the track, but he has a has a track where he, rather than using a plectrum, he bounces a chopstick off the strings, and it gives a really rhythmical. Every note is like a grrr, and um, it's just a really cool way to approach writing music. I tried it years and years ago. I came up with a load of completely different stuff. It's just a cool way to think about things. As I say, I've always held that kind of in the forefront of my mind when I'm writing is you want to do things that people recognize and are familiar with and will enjoy, but there are things that you can experiment with as well and do things a little bit differently and don't be afraid to kind of try those. Um, 
because you never know what will happen. So that's kind of cool. Lastly, I had a friend at music college called Duncan, who was an incredibly artistic guy, very pro prolific and a great drummer. And we were sat by the river one day after a lecture, uh, just sketching on our sketchbooks. And I remember him talking about the creative process and up until you finish belongs to you. And then once the piece is finished, that kind of just belongs to the world then. That kind of stuck with me because it made me really concentrate on the creative process itself and uh, enjoy that for, for what it was, but also understand that once something is done and out there, you can't change it and it's it's worth taking the time and attention uh, during the initial phases to kind of really make sure it's right and is what you want it to represent. Sometimes I really appreciate the the kind of punk ethic to things um, and sometimes it's really good to just kind of sit down, let whatever happens happens and there's some there's some true kind of expression in that but I also really value kind of tooth combing the process of creating something and understanding that you're doing it for yourself initially but also for anybody else who might find something in it uh, once it's complete and um, so yeah that that really once after that conversation since then I've, I've always really taken my time over uh, anything that I'm doing creatively. So there we go obviously these are all pretty conceptual and a little avant-garde and you might not be able to put them into practice immediately but I just realized all of these things I've kind of subconsciously have held on to and have definitely changed the way I approach doing things so I just thought I'd share them with you. It, let me know if you guys have any thoughts on this or if there's anything in particular with similar experiences or concepts you guys have that have maybe helped you I'd be really interested to hear. The coolest thing about doing this is kind of answering questions and sharing opinions and everything and uh, it's just really cool so yeah, let me know. Thank you so much for watching and liking and subscribing. If there's anyone you can think of that might enjoy this channel, then uh, give it a share, let them know. Until next time, peace out. I've been Rory. Peace out, yo.